cricket added to the festive cheer surrounding the Eid celebrations. The poster boys of Pakistan cricket were back in the park after a break. But New Zealand bowlers came to the party striking some early blows. Cleaned them up. Picks up the prize cal for the opposition skipper. Bumper goes for nine. Then Saim Ayub showed just why he is considered one of the brightest batting stars of the future. And that is absolutely brilliant. Along with the young gun, a vintage Fakhar Zaman lit up the Gaddafi Stadium. Oh, is there another one? How good was that? It was right on the toes. Matt Henry's hat trick brought the visitors back in the game. Hit high. Is it long enough? Oh, what a brilliant effort! It was then the turn of the feared Pakistan's fast bowling battery to turn up the heat. Aris Rove was simply unstoppable as New Zealand batters were blown over by his searing pace. Bowling, fittingly, Aris Rove knocks the stumps over. Can Pakistan continue their winning run or will New Zealand manage to bounce back? Cricket festivity continues at the Gaddafi Stadium in Lahore tonight. Welcome to the beautiful city of Lahore and all its glory. Well lit at this point of time in this festive period of Ramadan. And uh, we're here for the second T20 between Pakistan versus New Zealand. Dafa News, Bank Al Falah Dafa News presents T20 International Series. It's the second T20 live from Gaddafi Stadium between both these sides. Welcome to the Inverex Solar Energy Pit Side Show. And it's always a pleasure to bring you all the cricket coverage. And this is the second T20 international between both these sides. Pakistan are leading the series 1-0. They played magnificently yesterday. It was a clinical win by them. New Zealand falling short in different areas. Some areas of concern, but of course, uh, they've only just started their tour. Now, with me, I've got a very special uh, you know, set of guests. Of course, uh, we've got Grant Elliott, but next to him, is somebody who's normally sitting in the hot seat where I am. So it gives me great pleasure to have uh, Sikandar Bhatt next to me. Sikandar, you know what I'm liking about this? What I'm liking about this is that it gives me the opportunity to ask you all the tough questions. <laughs> Hang on a second. Hello and welcome to the Pitch Side Studio and here we are. <laughs> so now we're actually starting the show here. Now I've got my guests, Grant Elliott and of course Zara. <laughs> you know, the lights have gone off. But game is still on. It's the other side of the pitch. I've got the new ball here. So, should I shoot the first question to you? I, you're not allowed to do that because you're not in the hot seat anymore. Okay. It's me who's there and uh, I am going to be asking all the questions and all the tough questions. It gives me an opportunity to corner him as well on various topics we've, uh, you know, discussed off air. But starting with you, G, then um, New Zealand, uh, the way they started off, uh, not really the kind of start that they would have wanted, but it's just only the beginning. What are the areas do you think they need to change or improve on today? Are you guys all right, first of all? I don't want any, any fighting in the studio here <laughs> before I start my... Are we all right? We have a love-hate relationship. <laughs> look, look this side when you're talking. This, this is where the show <laughs> Sorry, is coming the from. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, listen, it was disappointing from New Zealand's perspective, but what I do think is that, you know, you never want to look for excuses uh, in cricket, but it was an early start for them. They had one day build up. I think that, you know, in terms of trying to adapt to this wicket, when you look in New Zealand conditions, you want to get the ball fuller as a bowler. And also, when the ball is quite short, you're expecting it to be a little bit, um, you know, I guess higher up, it gets that elevated bounce so that you can pull it and use your horizontal bat shots. And I think a lot of the time, the New Zealand players were caught playing horizontal, horizontal bat shots to a fuller delivery. So. I think that they need to adapt, they need to adapt quickly. I think the batting let them down. I think bowling was all right. There was a few extras, which I think New Zealand are normally really good with the extras. Fielding was on par. I just think it's the batting. And I think that that top three, uh, it will be interesting to see who bats in the top three today. But I think that that is a little bit unsettling. 
there's no Tim Seifert. He's at home for his, uh, the, the birth of his first child, so he's missing out, and obviously the IPL players. But New Zealand have to adapt, and they're a very proud nation. They always come back, and they always fight. And I think that that's indicative of Matt Henry's hat-trick. That hat-trick where Daryl Mitchell was diving over the boundary, they fight till the end. So I want to see a lot of fight from New Zealand, and I think uh, they're up against it. This is a very classy Pakistan team. What about Pakistan then, Sikandar? Everything went well for them yesterday, but they do have a selection dilemma. Uh, it's a good dilemma to have because there's lots to choose from. Yeah, yeah, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? I mean, you've got that many bowlers and, and you've got Asanullah sitting outside, Naseem Shah sitting outside and they're trying to make their way into the 11. And yesterday's performance in terms of bowling, Pakistan was spot on because we see uh, that, that thing that was missing in, against the Afghanistan cities, some key players were rested. They came back and they looked fresh after that little short break. And, and how good was Haris Rauf, of course, as we saw the way he bowled. I mean, absolutely Absolutely brilliant. Well, in case you guys missed out on what happened from yesterday's game, just a quick recap of how things went for Pakistan and New Zealand. Pakistan uh, obviously made 182 uh, in their 20 overs, and Saim Ayub was the top scorer along with Fakhar Zamani. Really got them off to that good start. And in response, New Zealand was bowled out for 94, and Pakistan winning by quite a handsome amount of runs. Well, Haris Rauf was definitely the star of the show yesterday, taking those four wickets. Uh, let's have a look at uh, how things went for him yesterday. I mean, you look at his performance, uh, Sikandar. I mean, he's been one of the main, main pre premier bowlers for Pakistan. What do you think makes him a standout bowler from the rest of the options that they have already in their resources? You know, they have Shaheen, they have Naseem. Base is something which is really not an issue within Pakistan cricket. You know, what, what's what been good about Haris Rauf is and the, the, the way he's graduated, from where he started off and where he is today. I mean, he's worked hard and he's, he's looked so good. And with that pace, if you have accuracy, then you are a really difficult candidate to handle as, as, as a batter. And that's what we saw yesterday. He was within the set of the stumps and he was rapid. And that's what we look at. And you know, you remember when you go back in time, he used to bowl first change in the T20s. His economy wasn't really that good. But now he's worked so well. He's got more variations coming in. He's got a good slow one. And, and you just see how he has come up as a fast bowler and that responsibility factor that has been put on him as a senior bowler now has just you know shown more bright colors in him as a bowler. Gee, you saw a bit of him at a very very early stage in his career. Well actually funny you mentioned that because Carl Mills is here as well. We saw Harris Ralph when we went to Sydney when they had the Finder Kalanda when you know 400,000 Lahorians joined the program to see if they could make the team and Harris Ralph was on tour, it was a development tour and you know he had hardly bowled with a you know a proper cricket ball, it was more tape ball so he was talented but now like you, you look at what he's done, he's done it all over the world, he's played in the Big Bash, he's you know played in New Zealand, wherever he goes he takes wickets so exactly what Sekunda said this guy is gold in any team, any white ball team, because someone that can take wickets through the middle or at the early stages just puts the, the brakes on any team. So I would throw him the ball all the time and go, get me a wicket. So bowl at the stumps, like Sikanda said, and bowl the speed of light. And that's yeah. what he did. Yeah, he's got, he's got a fantastic attitude. But talking about a fantastic attitude, it's not just the bowlers that have that. There is somebody who is a potential star in the making for Pakistan cricket. We're talking about Saim Ayub. Aruj uh, Mumtaz caught up earlier with him. Star Talk, brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. Well, a certain youngster who caught our eye during the recent HBL PSL was Saim Ayub, the youngster. He's alongside Saim. Thank you very much for joining me. A cast shot, which famous ho gaya tha, which caught our eyes, was the no-look pickup shot. We will talk about it, but first, tell us HBL PSL se international cricket ka safar, what has changed? I uh, think cricket is about the same as it is, because there are many things that analyze karte hain opposition ko aur strength pe sabki nazar hoti hai expose bhi hota hai lekin pressure is ke humne pakistan apne mulk ki jersey pehni hoti hai kyunki international cricket mein to wo thoda sa pressure hota hai aur obviously har level ke player pe wo pressure hota hai mera ye manna hai to aur agar aapne kal perform kiya hai tab bhi aaj agar aap match khel rahe hain to us usme bhi thodi nervousness aur pressure hota hai aapko zero se start karna padta hai har din to main nahi manta itna fark hai thoda sa fark hai lekin international cricket obviously a little bit difficult 
लिटिल बिट डिफिकल्ट तो है बट साइम इसने कहा कि प्रेशर होता है बट जब ये अपना नो लुक पिकअप शॉट खेलते हैं तो लगता नहीं कि कोई प्रेशर लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट सम ऑफ द शॉट्स ही डिड प्ले ड्यूरिंग द एच बी एल पी एस एल साइम खुद अपने इस शॉट के बारे में बताएं कहाँ से पिकअप किया वेर डिड इट कम फ्रॉम जस्ट जब मैं टी ट्वेंटी की प्रैक्टिस कर रहा था अपने नेशनल टी ट्वेंटी से पहले तो मैंने ये सोचा था कि कुछ अलग होना चाहिए क्योंकि माइंड में यही होता था कि कहाँ पे गैप्स होते हैं आपके अवेलेबल क्योंकि मैं ऐसा प्लेयर हूँ कि मैं गैप्स में खेलना प्रेफर करता हूँ तो ऑब्वियसली फाइनल लेग ज़्यादातर ऊपर रखते हैं बॉलर्स ना तो मैंने यही सोचा था कि इसको खेलना किस तरह से और इसको सिंपल भी रखना है लेकिन ये इसका जो सक्सेस सक्सेस रेट है वो ज़्यादा कैसे हो सकता है तो मैंने बेसिक्स यही सोची थी कि इसकी जो पोजिशनिंग है ना वो और हेड स्टिल होना चाहिए तो उससे वो बेहतरी आई थोड़ी तो जो आपने बात करी कि सिंपल क्योंकि जो फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ बैटिंग है वो प्रॉब्ली सेम ही रहते हैं हर चीज़ के अंदर क्योंकि इसमें आप एक चीज़ जल्दी करते हो यू गेट इनटू गुड पोजीशंस अर्ली एंड देन योर हेड रिमेन स्टिल तो उसमें आप तो अगर आप खुद भी एक दफ़ा डेमोस्ट्रेट करके बता दो कि आपके हिसाब से वॉट आर द फंडामेंटल्स क्योंकि इसमें आप बड़ा जल्दी पोजिशन में आते हो और जो आप की जिसकी बेसिक फंडामेंटल की बात करिए योर हेड रिमेन वेरी स्टिल सो इफ यू जस्ट गिव अस ए क्विक क्या आपके क्या क्या बेसिक स्टेप्स हैं ये आप मेरे स्टेप्स वैसे एक्सपोज कर रही हैं टीवी पे <laughs> <laughs> सबको पता चल जाएगा लेकिन ऐसा है कि सबसे पहली कोशिश होती है मेरी कि डीप क्रीज में खड़ा हूँ ठीक है और उसके बाद अपनी बेस बनाऊँ डीप जाके बिल्कुल डीप क्रीज में जितना मैं जा सकता हूँ उसके बाद मैंने हेड हेड को स्टिल रखना है और डीप पोजिशन बनाने के बाद मैंने मैं देखता हूँ कि बॉलर जहाँ बॉल ऑफ स्टम्प पर बॉल करेगा तो उसको उस तरीके से लेके जाना मिडिल में कर दी तो जाएगी पीछे और लेग स्टम्प पर कर दी तो वैसे ही पीछे चली जाएगी तो ये बेसिकली ऐसा नहीं है कि मैं पहले से ही सोच लेता हूँ कि नहीं मैंने मारने ही मारना है लेकिन मैं पोजीशन बना के इसको देखता हूँ कि बस मिल गई बॉल तो फिर मारना है इसको नहीं तो नहीं लेकिन हेड इसमें चल रहा था अच्छा जिस टी ट्वेंटी क्रिकेट इवॉल्व करी जितनी कहते हैं ना मॉडर्न टेक हिसाब से फंकी भी होती चली जा रही है ये नो लुक साय मयूब शॉट भी एक उसी कैटेगरी में आता है कुछ और इन्वेंट कर रहे हैं नहीं अभी अभी सारी सीक्रेट्स नहीं बता रहे हमें पहले तो मैं अभी फिलहाल ये कोशिश कर रहा हूँ कि जितना सिंपल क्रिकेटिंग शॉट्स में मेरा स्कोर हो सके उस उतना हो क्योंकि अभी देखें लास्ट कुछ मैचों में भी मैंने नो लुक शॉट ट्राई नहीं किया क्योंकि मुझे ऐसे रन्स मिल रहे हैं तो फिर ज़रूरत नहीं है लेकिन जहाँ अगर मुझे रन्स नहीं मिलेंगे या मेरी नेचुरल इंस्टिंग आएगी विकेट पर खड़े हो गए तो वो मैं जरूर ट्राई करूंगा और अभी इसके अलावा बहुत सारे शॉट्स हैं कोशिश कर रहा हूं मैं बट अभी नहीं बताऊंगा साइम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस आई होप यू हैड अ फन चैट लिसनिंग टू व्हाट द यंगस्टर हैज टू से एंड देयर इज प्लेंटी ऑफ ऑल ऑफ यू टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस गाय हु हैज अ लॉन्ग वे टू कम इन नेशनल क्रिकेट स्टार टॉक ब्रॉट टू यू बाय इनवरेक्स सोलर एनर्जी ही सर्टेनली मेड सर्टेन हेडलाइंस विद दैट नो लुक शॉट क्विक थॉट्स ऑन दैट डिफिकल्ट टू एग्जीक्यूट Oh I think you know you, if you keep your eye on the ball doesn't matter at impacts it doesn't really matter where it goes but the fact that you know you have to be balanced when you're batting you see he gets into a balanced position he waits and if the delivery is in the the area where he can perform that shot and we've seen it we've seen a number of players do it you know Martin Guptill he'll go bang and then just keep his head down and you know I I think that you know players that are balanced and the eyes are the most important thing you can judge line and length very well and he does that i mean he looked like such a quality player he was playing proper cricket shots he wasn't going out there and just throwing the bat at everything they were quality cricket shots especially that one over extra cover all right so uh, we're talking about time are you playing that brilliant brilliant shot it's definitely not easy to execute we've seen uh, a bit of that in the, in the past as well the captains are getting ready now with the toss babar azam and the captain alongside tom lay they will interested to see if they make any changes at all because uh, we have seen that pakistan would normally stick to that winning combination that's been the one thing of pakistan any changes do you expect before we head towards the toss or do you think pakistan's going to stick to the winning combination I don't think Pakistan needs to do anything I mean they need, would go with that winning combination I don't know about New Zealand what the what the bench can offer but Pakistan I think they should carry on at least it's just the second game of the 5 T20s so stay with what you have They do have a lot of options though in that camp as analyzed there Naseem Shah remember he yeah. wasn't playing um, you've also got an option of you know the openers because there's been so much uh, conjecture around who should open Mohammad Harris is also in the mix of things so uh, a lot of a lot of uh, dilemmas but like i said not di- not bad dilemmas to have well they can do if stakhar and bring in haris if they want to again why would you touch something which is going well for you you've just had a win by 88 runs if they want to sacrifice a bowler in fahim ashraf an all rounder and bring in haris i don't know but they've got a keeper already i don't see haris coming at the moment all right uh, hopefully we will get to see him at some point because he is another exciting talent to come through pakistan cricket now we are ready with the toss it's over to bazat khan who's out there with the two captains 
Dawson Pitch Report, brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. Toss time here at Gaddafi Stadium, Lahore. Second game of a best of five. We've got the ICC match referee Dapper, Ali Nakwi, Babur Azam, and Tom Latham. I believe Babur has the coin. Heads is the call. That is tails. It's a tails. Babur, you won the toss again. What are you doing and why? Uh, we will bat first uh, because of uh, uh, pitches. Uh, Look like dry and little bit grass on it, uh, so we, to, we will try to score on those boards and uh, put pressure on them. Is it slightly different to the pitch we had in the first game? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looked like a different and less uh, grass on, uh, on the pitch, so yeah, I think it's much better than last night. What type of team combination do you have? Uh, we have the same team. Same team. Um, you've got so many fast bowlers in the squad. Is that a good thing or is that a headache in team selection? <laughs> to be honest, it's not easy uh, because we are, I have blessed. I have a lot of uh, like outstanding bowler uh, lineup and uh, the way all the bowlers are uh, bowling, especially our uh, senior boys and uh, youngster also. So uh, definitely it's not easy, but uh, yeah, good to wear a lot of fast bowlers. Well, whoever doesn't play bowls faster in the nets or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone tried to uh, do uh, fast bowling and uh, try to fast, full fast. <laughs> Thank you very much and good luck. Tom, it's the same thing again, but it's such a quick turnover. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, yeah, look, I think it's a good thing. Uh, we've obviously got to park uh, what happened. Uh, last night and, and we've got to learn pretty quickly and uh, you know we've got the a great opportunity to do that first up with the ball. And um, we saw with the bat slightly different conditions the horizontal bat shot slightly tougher here? Yeah I think that's probably the adjustment we probably didn't uh, you know make quick enough we as you said we probably looked a little bit square uh, initially rather than probably looking uh, looking a little bit straighter so um, as I said we've got a pretty it's a pretty quick turnaround so it's important we take those learnings from last night and uh, and put them into practice today. So any changes in your team at all? Yeah, we've got two changes. So we're just resting Adam Milne just with a quick turnaround. And, and each side has got a little precautionary niggle. So uh, Henry, uh, Henry Shipley and Colm McConkey coming to the side. So still pace on? Still a bit of pace, yeah. So good luck. Good yes, luck thank again. you. So the news here is that Pakistan have won the toss and they're having a bat. And to tell us more about the pitch, we'll just go over to Ruj Muntaz. Thanks, Bez. And I'm not surprised why Babar Azam actually chose to bat first. It's the same surface where the HBL PSL 8 final was held. 200 played 199 in that thriller of an epic final. And why you think Babar Azam chose to bat is have a look at the color of the surface. The one that previously played had those fresh blade grass of green and that green tinge. The cracks and the zip of the surface provided that little bit of lateral movement, which is why talking up front or batting up front was slightly difficult. This one. It looks a little bit more harder, rolled in. The grass is more browner than greener. So once again, the bowler's margin of error will be very slim because it again looks like it has plenty of runs on offer. Dawson Pitch Report, brought to you by Inverex Solar Energy. All right, once again, Pakistan going unchanged in this match as well. Sekandar, we were talking about the fact that uh, Pakistan will, might go unchanged. But, I mean, just in terms of what can they do differently? I have to ask you that question because you normally ask that from the losing side. But as a side, you're always looking to evolve and improve. So what are the areas that at least you would like to see Pakistan sort of uh, work on? Well, not really differently, but we'd love to see what happens if uh, Saim Ayub and uh, the other uh, Fakhar Zaman come in later in batting because they've got four openers and they complement each other. We lost Babur and Mohamed Rizwan early, still got that power play going, but how would Saim and Fakhar Zaman perform if they come an opportunity to come in in over number 10 or 11? And then a little bit more from Shadab and Iftikhar and Imad, if they come in somewhere around the 15th over, Pakistan lost the momentum, don't forget, in the first game. That was because of a hat-trick. That doesn't happen every day. But yes, Pakistan could have scored that, those extra 15, 20 runs in that first game. And they'd like to correct that because 200 is, is available out there. OK, you've passed your test really well. I have to say, you know, on, on, on this end as well, you're, you're good on both ends, I have to say. But thank you so much for joining, Sikandar and Grant Elliott, both of you. Just a quick reminder, in case you guys have just tuned in, that Pakistan has won the toss and they have elected to bat first. We'll be taking a short break and when we do come back, we will be joined by a set of new guests.
back at the Inverex Solar Energy pit side show. If, in case you've just just joined in, Pakistan has won the toss and they have elected to bat first. They're going unchanged. Uh, two changes for New Zealand as well, and now being joined by Kyle Mills and Bazit Khan. Baz, uh, are you surprised at all that Pakistan have gone unchanged, or is that something that you were expecting? Um, no, I would have thought they'd go unchanged, but you just look at the fast bowlers. You want to rotate the fast bowlers. Maybe uh, in the next game or the game after that, they rotate them. The only issue would be that you're playing back-to-back -back games, and do you want to put your faster men under that stress? At the moment, they think they're fit enough, they're good enough to, to do that. So that was the only concern. Otherwise, I would have expected the same team. Well, New Zealand, on the other hand, have decided to rest uh, one of their fast bowlers. You know, uh, Baz is talking about workload management and how it, it is going to be a relatively longer tour. So do you think that is the correct decision? Yeah, at, at a Milne, I guess, a, a history of injuries. Uh, only just recently flew into Pakistan, one training session straight into the game. So I think it's probably a bit too much back-to-back -back early on in the tour, especially it's very hot. Today was a very hot day in Lahore. So he steps out, and a young fellow called Henry Shipley comes into play as his replacement, who's a very tall bowler, hits the wicket really hard, inexperienced in these types of conditions. Uh, but I'm sorry he's uh, champing at the bit to get out there. Yeah, well, what about Pakistan then? Let's have a look at uh, their side, what it looks like. We've pretty much the same team, Baz. Uh, anything that they can do differently in terms of, you know, having a floating batting order, or make a few changes, uh, send somebody up the order, down the order? Yeah, the only thing that they would have said is the same order, but bat better. They need to just, just slightly bat better. I think they left a few runs out there when they did bat, and at one stage it looked as if they might get to 200, which they didn't. But otherwise, they'd be very satisfied with the way that they played, not last night, but tonight, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, McConkey comes back, uh, comes in for New Zealand as well, alongside Shipley that you just mentioned. Uh, what do you think they bring to the table? You already mentioned Shipley. What about uh, McConkey? Well, McConkey, right arm off spinner, middle order batter, very good player, very good domestic record uh, back home in New Zealand. Uh, again, one of these younger players who are on this tour to see what he's all about, really, in this international setup. Very dominant performance last night by Pakistan with the ball. They, they were ruthless, let's be honest. They bowled fast, they bowled straight, they were entertaining to watch. This New Zealand top order need to stack on some runs. You know, they need to front up with some runs at the top of the order because the bowling group did an OK job last night. Agree with the opening combination that they have? Uh, look, I think so with the group that they have here. I think uh, Tom Latham will look to, to bat through and the others need to bat around him. All right, all right. So sticking to the same opening combination where we're talking about this series being played in Ramadan. We saw a brilliant crowd yesterday here in Gaddafi Stadium. It's great to see them come out in huge numbers and support their sides in this particular month. It's time for some Gup Shup with Mehik. Crackhead of a match we all witnessed last night with Pakistan coming out on top against New Zealand in that first T20 international. Now it's said that Pakistan has one of the best bowling attacks in the world and that's been the case for many years now. However, we saw a good example of that last night with quality spells from that bowling department. Now let's go and ask the fans regarding their thoughts from last night's performance and their expectations moving forward. अच्छा कल के मैच में पाकिस्तान ने काफी तगड़ी बॉलिंग कराई तो आप ओवरऑल उनकी बॉलिंग परफॉर्मेंस के बारे में क्या कहना चाहेंगे उनकी बॉलिंग काफी अच्छी थी हारिस रोफ ने फोर विकेट्स लिए हैं मैन ऑफ द मैच भी रहे हैं एंड पे उन्होंने स्कोर भी है काफी इनिंग्स के हैंड पे हमें अच्छे टोटल तक पहुंचाया है उनकी बॉलिंग काफी अच्छी थी इसकी वजह से हमें मैच में काफी जल्दी विक्ट्री मिल गई है अच्छा आपको लगता है कि शाहीन शाह अफरीदी इस वक्त के बेस्ट बॉलर हैं दुनिया में वेल डेफिनेटली उन्होंने इतने सारे मतलब विकेट्स लिए हैं और इतने मतलब बेस्ट बॉलर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड हैं और लेजेंडली हैं वो तो Definitely the best bowler. अच्छा golden question क्या आपको लगता है कि इस space attack के साथ पाकिस्तान इस साल World Cup वापस पाकिस्तान जीत कर ला सकता है? Talking about World Cup यार हमारे पास bowlers अब इतने अच्छे आ चुके हैं like Shaheen Afridi, Haris Rauf, and Zaman Khan के मुझे लगता है कि हमें hope अच्छा बस तब hope हमें अच्छी करनी चाहिए और and I know कि जो है ना वो World Cup अगर ऐसे bowlers के साथ ऐसे bases के साथ चलता रहे तो will win the World Cup. Definitely. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope for the best. Yes, inshallah. Thank you so much for speaking to us. And um, as we can see that the fans are soaring high because of Pakistan's win last night. However, let's see if New Zealand can bounce back today and try and get a win under their belt. Or will it be Pakistan who will rise victorious again?
Thanks, Mike. I think New Zealand will definitely be looking to redeem themselves today. Kyle, uh, just in terms of how they plan to redeem themselves, you said they should stick to the opening combination. But uh, there was one area, and a couple of areas, but one area that of positive, if you look at their performance yesterday. Matt Henry's hair trick is something that's going to go down in not just as a personal milestone but in the history books yeah one of four new zealanders to uh, to achieve the feat and he bowled excellent last night he bowled fast he bowled nice and straight and what a great catch on the boundary for the third wicket you can see the carry they got early on at the start of that innings was excellent that's the line right there they need to continue to bowl daryl mitchell here brilliant hands down the deep Kept his little toes inside the boundary rope right, and flicked it onto Chad Bowles for a great bit of teamwork. But Matt Henry needs to replicate that type of performance tonight. You need the senior players with an inexperienced group. You do need those senior players to step up. You're talking about them stepping up. They need to step up in their batting department as well. I mean, considering the total, considering the response that they had uh, to that first innings total, I mean, uh, is it really about adapting to these conditions, coming out of that jet lag a little bit um, and just sort of getting in there? You'd you like to think they'll be better for the hit out from last night. Only one training session into last night's game. Uh, not good enough. I think they'll be better for that experience. They need runs on the board. Again, they need those senior players to step up. This Pakistan uh, bowling lineup, it was ruthless last night. They bowled fast, they were accurate, and they were intimidating. And it was a tough challenge for the New Zealanders to come out and face that. But uh, look, that's international cricket. That's touring this part of the world. And to get a taste of it last night, hopefully they'll be better for the, the experience. Do you think Pakistan has the best bowling attack in the world right now? I mean, I asked this question yesterday as well. Basil is having a bit of a chuckle there. I don't know why. I'll come to him. There's a few good ones around. You look at that Australian lineup, they're very good. Uh, the New Zealand lineup, when they have Tim Southey, Trent Bolt back, they swing it around. But as far as uh, pure pace and the left arm variety um, as well of the Freddie, to see him back, it's great to see him back, isn't it, on the international stage. Pakistan cricket needs him back. World cricket needs him back. And to see Harris Ralph bowl so well last night as well. Uh, such a guy with that great energy which and he lifts the team and he's certainly left from the front just in terms of what's going to be a good total from a new zealand perspective about it then um i think they did well at restricting pakistan 280 slightly different um wicket so maybe something under the 160 but they'll have to bat well the only good thing for them is that they've now faced the pakistani attack once it's quite a different attack zaman khan Harris Rauf, shahin shah Fridi. need to face them a lot to actually bat better against them it might be a case of them getting better as the tour goes on and they get a chance to face them more but it should be an interesting contest one thing is for sure don't count New Zealand out completely because they have an ability to bounce back really, really well. Now, on that note, we will be taking a short break. Pakistan has won the toss and they have decided to bat first. See you guys shortly after this break.